Hello and welcome to the November 2019 update from Clyde Bridge Station. As you'll have seen from the previous video, I bought a few things at the Falkirk Model Railway Show. Not all of them are on the layout at the moment, but a few things are. And I'll talk you through what I've done and what I'm going to do with them. And you'll see a little bit of what um, has been done on the layout as well. There's one or two things which I've done at the time of filming which can't be revealed until the December update, all being well, but um, I'll talk you through all of those. So please enjoy the video and any comments, queries or suggestions, uh, leave them in the comments box at the bottom. Thank you very much. These are the signals that I bought at Falkirk. You can see the two of them there. And these are for platforms 3 and 6. A signal gantry is going to be required for platforms 4 and 5. The gantry itself, I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to do that, but the introduction of these signals here and here does give me a bit of leeway in being able to do other things now. Like the other signals, they are just dummy ones, they're not wired into anything on the layout. I don't feel I have the need to do so. And the cable trunking is matched up so it just comes up to where the signals are. The, there's all, they also come with these line side cabinets. Now I've painted one silver rather crudely as you could see, but I've also went and extended the cable trunking along to it. There's a little bit here because that'll be used for the signal gantry there, the cables coming out of that. The completion of um, these two signals means that I don't need any other of these um, signal brackets, signal posts at all now. And it'll just be trying to adapt something for the signal gantry. But that's now looking likely it'll be next year before I'll get round to um, being able to do that. One other thing that having those signals there and has allowed me to do was ballast oops, ballast the rest of platforms two and three so they're not completely ballasted. Obviously the, the time of the filming of this video it's actually in the midst of uh, November, so the ballasting was done um, the day after I visited the Falkirk Model Railway show. It'll take several days at least to dry fully. Uh, it is a bit solid at the moment, but so I'll have to give it a few, a little while longer to fully dry it because it's been pretty cold um, recently. I've had the heater on prior to filming today. Once that dries out, as I say, this will all be done here, but a lot of it will be getting stained um, with uh, the Hatton's oil spill kit, which David Watson of Dean Park Station has um, demonstrated in the past. So, obviously that's going to be a, a major job in the future. One little job that will have to get done in the near future is a little post here with the do not trespass on the railway sign and then some of this thin ballast here will then go onto there as well. But again, that's a, a, a small job that I'll be doing there. Although, I don't know whether I actually put it on there or possibly actually on the platform. Let me know what you think. I mentioned to you there about David Watson with Dean Park Station and he's just completed the traction maintenance depot building on his layout. So why not pop over and check it out, Dean Park Station. It's on Facebook as well as here on YouTube. And if you like your Scottish themed layouts, um, another David um, has Struff Pepper Junction. He's been in and out of hospital recently but I'm pleased to see he's making a great recovery now. Go and check out um, Struff Pepper Junction set in the same era and region. Above the station area, I've done no work on the retail park at all in the last month. Um, probably in December I'll get a couple of bits of balsa wood um, for this whole area. And then the aim will simply be to get that on and get it painted blue. And then I can also get thin bits of balsa wood to make the pavements. I've got one more Ten Commandments unit to get properly painted, put in there, and then it'll be a case of starting to install, install street lighting. So nothing's been done at all here in the last month. 
I'll just pan the camera down here though, and I'm just praying that the, the little blue jar of paint doesn't get stuck to the sign, because I've put that sign on there um, from my Sankey Scenic stuff. Bits of cotton bud cut off to make the posts and a bit of plastic card and I've stuck that sign on so that people know exactly where they're coming into. There's not one on the other side because it'll be hidden anyway, you won't be able to see it but it's just a mirror of that other one that you could see just on there. So passengers arriving at the town now know exactly where they're arriving. It's been stuck down using Humbro Polish cement although um, I have to say that it's not sticking down too well at the moment so I might need to apply a little bit more but I'm just praying that a little bottle of paint doesn't get stuck to it as well so fingers crossed but all being well that should be in position. A couple other things that need to be done in this area um, and that's to apply more of this thin ballast around here once that sign's stuck on and then to maybe put in a, another cable drum like what you see there and possibly a little bit of grass as well. Now before I explain what these are I better give a couple more shout outs to some layouts. And West Blythe TMD always um, provides some advice and comments so please check West Blythe TMD out set in Northumberland. Also please check out Richard Warren at Everard Junction set in the Network South East era. Um, he's got quite a few things going on at the moment. He's actually been up um, here in Fife recently visiting David Watson. So Richard from Everard Junction, if you're watching, please, the next time you come up to Fife, could you nip along and visit Clyde Bridge Station, please? Uh, you'd be most welcome to come along. And also, Kirkton Road Junction. Now, the guy that runs that... Um, lives like David Watson myself in Fife so please go and check him out as well these are all on YouTube and I appreciate your support now in the last update I mentioned I was going to get some new brick stuff made up, brick walls made up for the ends of the platforms well this is my rather crude attempt at it uh, and what I've done is it's simply bits of the wall slate and then thin plastic card on the top which has to be painted probably grey and these might get painted red. And then what I would do is I'd probably stick a base on the bottom, thin plastic card base on the bottom. And likewise on there. And they would then get stuck into position replacing the uh, wooden ones that I've made. I admit they're rather crudely made but I've got some of that slate left so what I might do is have another go um, at them if I'm not happy with them uh, but using thin plastic card on the bottom at the start I'll certainly see how they look once they get onto this, the platforms as I say they are crudely made so they're not up to the high standards that other people might make them off one other thing I actually mentioned about them as well I am acutely aware about how that bit's actually a little bit taller there I'll have to try and cut that off somehow but all being well, um, they should be in position by December. Just moving along a bit, and these are the advertising hoardings that I bought at uh, the Falkirk Model Railway Show. And you see this is one of the adverts that would stick on there. Now, one problem you'll notice is straight away is that obviously some of the brown paint, if I actually put it, oops, if I actually put it like that, and I'll put this advert on just to let you see. And you can actually see the problem that you've got. So I'll need to actually add more brown paint around that. And then stick it on. So that way it doesn't look like there's the white showing you see. And I'll definitely be putting one there. And one will go along here somewhere. I'll just take that back out now. But that's actually where I'm going to end up citing them. I've got a selection of four adverts. Now that one there is actually out with the right out with the ear because that style of lettering that Tesco used, they didn't actually use that style of font in 1990. It was a much tighter font that they actually used. 
Um, that one could possibly get used, but I think I've downloaded an Intercity one from 1990. I'm going to try and one day print that off and see if that will fit on there. Um, it has Intercity, now you're motoring, and that might be a more appropriate one for the layout. So, um, eh, so obviously a wee bit of more work to get done on these. And hopefully say, I'll at least have one of them in position. Still a lot of junk on the street scene, but folks, trust me, I am working my way through it. Somebody else who's working their way through stuff at the moment on their layout is DoubleOrail.com. They've been putting some videos up over the last couple of days on uh, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, so please check them out on YouTube. And also, um, Charlie Bishop. Now, he's got Chadwick TMD in the Chadwick Junction model railway layout. Check Charlie out. He's set in the 1970s in the Western region and his updates are every two to three weeks and they're really worth watching, folks. Um, lots of hints and tips. And Charlie goes into great detail about the things that he does, so please check him out. And um, he might ask for advice. If you can give him that advice, he will fully appreciate it. Now, as so we're moving along the street scene here, there's the, the jewellery shop that I bought at the Falkirk Model Rail Show, and it's currently branded Joe's Jewellery. I might, however, rebrand that as H. Samuel. I was going to rebrand it originally as Ratner's, this layout being set in 1990. At one time, Ratner's, H. Samuel and Ernest Jones were in common ownership, the Ratner's group, now known as the Signet Group. For those of you who are old enough, you may remember about something that the chairman of Ratner's managed to do one time in the 1990s, and it became known as doing a Ratner. And he, all, um, through something that he said at an Institute of Directors conference, he managed to single-handedly destroy a company overnight. So that's why I might not rebrand that as Ratner's, but possibly as H. Samuel. I won't go into detail about what exactly he'd done, but those of you who are old enough, and I include myself on that, well, damn, we all know what he'd done. Now, the Joe's Jewellery shop, like some of the other ones that's on here, has not been glued down yet, but that will actually take... That will actually happen eventually, but you know, just sitting there, and, um, the Garnham's Getaway Shop you see there. If I can get another travel agent, I might do that as well, but I'll give it a different name, um, something like Lund Polly or AT Mays, given the fact that this is set in Scotland. I'm also on the lookout for one of these um, wee accountant shops because what I'll do is I'll. Get plastic card over another one of these, not this one, but another one. I'll put plastic card over it and give it the name of a bank, maybe say the Clydesdale Bank or the Royal Bank of Scotland. This was back in the days when you had banks on the high street, by the way. You remember those days? When you're actually talking about um, street scenes and that. Please go and check out um, the Glenrothes Model Railway Club with their um, Cadham Bay layout, which is a fantastic layout. Now, I don't know if it's on Facebook um, at all or on Twitter, but please, please, please go and give them a check out because um, it is a fantastic layout. And I also mentioned to... Um, in the Falkirk show interviewed the Cooper Model Railway uh, Club and I spoke to Ryan Glenn there about their, their layout Eaton Road. Now a quick update on that for you. On the Sunday there were six trophies presented and one of them was donated by to the, the Falkirk Model Railway Club by a gentleman who presented it to the layout he thought was the best in show and I'm very pleased to say that Eaton Road got that cup Full details are on the Cooper Model Railway Facebook page. Please go and have a look at it, and they would and they would gladly accept you as a friend on there as well. Eden Road is also on Twitter, Eden Road TMD. Check them out. One last thing for this month. When I was talking about this area here being blank, somebody suggested in the comments box to get some skip 
skips, maybe a skip. So I've got these um, skips here from Falkirk and I've placed them there and yeah, I'll, I'll have to put something in the skips like but you know something, that person, I don't know who it was that um, suggested it, I will find out eventually but to that person that suggested putting skips down, thank you very much indeed for that. That is a fantastic suggestion and it's really completed that area there now. Obviously still lots of work to get done in the depot area. A lot of junk to be cleared as from the street scene but yeah, absolutely pleased with that and to you, thank you very much indeed for that. So that completes the November update from this uh, layout. If I haven't mentioned your layout, I am very, very sorry, but there's that many layouts that are following me or have started following me. I can't mention them all to you, but for those of you who are wondering about other layouts, check out my subscribers and do subscribe if you want to as well. But check out all my subscribers there's, and that will give you the idea of the layouts that follow me as well as the ones that I've mentioned to you today. Now by the time of the December update, Hopefully these hoardings, one of them will be in place. Hopefully that Scott Rail sign will be uh, fully done and I'll have work done in the retail park. <coughs> but of course, time, money and the weather will all be factors in whether or not I actually do so. In the meantime, I'd like to just thank you very much for watching uh, this month's update from Clyde Bridge Station and I look forward to your company next time. And please enjoy your layouts. Goodbye for now.